Um, well, we are in a, a series called Greater Things, and you know, you should have gotten a bookmark in your chair. On the one side, you've got four core values that I'm preaching through this month that I think are super important to any church, to any movement of, of the gospel. And uh, on the other side is this kind of theme verse that uh, we're unpacking through this. It's John fourteen twelve, and it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And so in this series, we're talking about the greater things that we're seeking as a church. Things like being renewed, uh, experiencing uh, you know, God's presence in a very tangible way in our church. We're talking about doing kingdom-sized things where we're turned out and focused on our community as much as we're focused internally. And so these are all movements that we see within the early church uh, uh, movement. And when the early church were focused on these things, the four things, you know, proclaiming the gospel, uh, being a formational community, of living for a purpose bigger than themselves. And when they were actively not only praying, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, but they were working towards that. When all of those dynamics are at play within the early church, and because of that, we see God doing amazing stuff through them and through those churches. And so we're focusing on that because we believe it has relevance to us today. Now, how are we going to experience the greater things is by focusing on, starting by focusing on these four things um, that we're talking about in this series. So today what we're going to look at is formational community. Now I know that we don't use that word formation a lot. Uh, you know, it's not like when you go up to somebody and you say, hey, how are you doing? And you respond and say, well, I'm, I'm really happy about who I'm being formed into. I mean, that just sounds odd, doesn't it? Sounds weird, by the way. Uh, but it still is a topic that we need to be focused on. Spiritual formation. I mean, that's why we have a church. That's why we have discipleship programs and, and Sunday school and small groups and just about everything that we do should be focused. Even worship, singing, preaching, everything is about spiritual formation. It is at the core of what we're about. It's about being formed in the image of Christ. And that's what spiritual formation is really getting at. Is, is Christ being formed in you? And so, uh, we're going to be talking about this a little bit this morning because it's a topic that is very important to me. And in my ministry, I've been reading some and, and listening to some podcasts about a book that was written back in the 1970s by Richard Lovelace. He was a, a theological giant in the, reform, uh, the Reformed tradition, sorry, the Presbyterian side of the, the church branch. Um, and Richard wrote this book in 1979, I think it was, it's called Dynamics of Spiritual Life. And in that book he writes this, he says, Spirituality in many ways was treated as the neglected stepchild of the Christian movement. Now Richard is talking about the church of the 1970s. But it is still true of the church today. So often the church today is neglecting spiritual formation... And instead is focused on other things that they feel are more critical. Things like defense of doctrine. Sound familiar? Things like the business of the church. Sound familiar? So all of this got me to thinking about, and by the way, we're going to get to the scripture in a minute. I'm setting up the groundwork for you to understand that passage that we're about to read. But all of this got me to thinking about how focused... We have been on denominational stuff and institutional stuff 
over the last couple of years. And what really got me thinking was our ministry council meeting last week. And uh, we, we met in this room and, you know, we worked through our agenda. And what I discovered after that meeting was almost all of our conversation was about church business stuff. Forming new committees, electing people, talking about how we're managing the transition stuff with the, you know, uh, with all of the leaving the UMC. And, and we focused on all of that. And what we didn't focus on was our mission. You know, what the church is really about. Making disciples, spiritual formation stuff. And I left that meeting and it like slapped me on the forehead. I was like, wow, that was weird. Not because of anything our church leaders necessarily are doing, but because of me. You know, I'm not pointing a finger at you without pointing three or four back at myself this morning. And... It convicted me. And I knew I was going to be preaching on this topic, and I think it was a little bit prophetic, in a sense, that that I started dealing with that internally this week. Um, Because what are we doing, y'all, if we aren't focused on spiritual formation stuff? And so today is just a call to all of us. We got to get... To the, about, you know, back to this, to the root of what the church is supposed to be about. And all of these core values are taking us there because it's so easy to get focused on the church stuff that we forget about the discipleship stuff. And that is partly my fault. And I have to confess that today. Um, And so we need to repent for allowing these things to become the most important thing. You know, I'm reminded of the vine and the branches analogy that Jesus gives in John chapter 15. And in that analogy, He teaches us this, that we must never forget that at the heart of authentic Christian faith, whether that's institutional or personal, is this vibrant, life-giving relationship with Jesus. That's what it means to be connected to the vine. He is the vine, we are the branches. We are only fruitful in as much as we are abiding in that relationship. So we need to be reminded of that this morning. By the way, there's a little ant right here. I'm going to put him down. There you go. Tom, you can contend with him later. (laughs) So, it's our relationship with Jesus that changes lives. I've never seen anybody's life changed by a good committee meeting. (laughs) It's just the truth, y'all. So we got to get back to the root of it all. And the root is this. At the core, we are a formational community. Whether it's kids ministry, youth ministry, adult ministry, single ministry, women's ministry, men's ministry, serving ministry, hospitality ministry, tech team, preaching team, worship team, no matter what we are a part of, it is all to be focused on. Is this helping To form people in the image of Jesus. That's the litmus test. We are not just an organizational entity. We are not just a business. If we want renewal, then we got to put our focus back on being a community that makes disciples. Now, Acts chapter 11. Because I want you to see how these folks were doing this. Living this out. So I'm going to read uh, from Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through... I'll, I'll stop at verse 26. All right. Listen to what's going on in Antioch. 
Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews, but among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, that's Greek-speaking Jews, by the way, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. And news of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas sent to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what we see happening here in this story is the spread of and the growth of Christianity and the church uh, in the first century. And we learn that through all these different missionary journeys that the uh, disciples and apostles were participating in, uh, that the church is exploding in new areas. And so here it is growing in this community in Antioch. It was a Gentile community. And it says that it was in this city that the followers of Jesus were first called Christians. So this is the first instance that we have in the New Testament of the word Christian. Now I believe that the reason that the people in Antioch labeled the followers of Jesus Christians was because Christ was being formed so deeply in their life that when they saw them, they saw Him. When they looked at this community of Jesus followers, they saw so much of the message and ministry of Jesus being reflected in their lives that they called them little Christs, little Christians, little followers of Jesus. They were becoming more and more like Jesus. And y'all, this is the goal of formational community is to be shaped into the image of Jesus so that we reflect more of His living and loving in our lives. This is the goal. And y'all, when we look over the last 75 years of theologians who are writing about spiritual formation, they all say the same thing. Like one of the most influential ones uh, when I was in seminary, was Robert Mulholland. And in his, in his book, Invitation to Journey, uh, he gives a definition of spiritual formation. And he says, it's the process of being conformed to the image of Christ for the sake of the world. And I think it sums it up very well, what our spiritual journey is all about. It's the same point that Richard Lovelace makes in his book, uh, dynamics of spirituality. And this is what makes the church unique. It makes it different from every other community out there. Is that we're focused on that end result. Conform to the image of Christ for the sake of the world. That's what it's about. And y'all, Paul was focused on this as well. And in Galatians 4.19, he says, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you. So Paul was focused on this. The reason that Paul labored and, and suffered and traveled and preached and was beaten and the reason was because he believed that his goal was to lead people to follow Jesus and to be like Jesus. For Christ to be formed in us. And y'all, this is what was happening in Antioch. 
And that's why they labeled them Christians. Now, what was going on in Antioch specifically? Well, two things, and, and this first one I'm just going to mention because I talked about it last week. But they are preaching the gospel. And that's why there's this explosion of growth numerically and spiritually in that faith community. Because these disciples go there and preach. And they preach to everybody. Not just in the synagogues to Jews, but they preach to everyone. The Gentiles, the Greeks, all of them. And the church that was being born there was always making room for new people. Through the proclamation of the gospel. Y'all, that's what the church is to be about. We always, you look around this room, we got, we got some empty chairs in here. Because we got room for new people to be added. And we as a church, our staff, we've been talking about that a good bit over the last few weeks. Of how can we make sure that we are creating space for new people. For our community. So that they can hear the gospel. And y'all, this is what is happening. And this is what the people see is going on. And what makes this community so different. It's because of their message. So that's the first thing. But then, we see the second thing. And this is where I want to dig in around just for a few moments here this morning. But what is being born is a particular type of community. Koinonia community. Now if you'll look at your bookmark, you'll see that word koinonia listed there. It's spelled out with uh, English letters and then underneath, you'll notice it in the Greek letters. Koinonia. We are first introduced to this idea in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And that verse says this, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. That word fellowship in the Greek is koinonia. So what is happening here in the second chapter of Acts is we see the church being born with the Pentecostal movement. The Holy Spirit is poured out. Peter starts uh, preaching Christ and Him crucified and resurrected. And because of that, thousands of people become believers and they repent and they follow Jesus and they start forming into little house church communities. That's where the, the first churches started was in people's homes. Small gatherings of Christians. And the flavor of the community that they are creating is described right here. It says they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. That's the Gospels. Like the Gospel of Mark and, and other teachings that were being orally passed down about Jesus and the message of Christ. So they taught that stuff. They believed in it. And they also had a particular kind of community. It was called a fellowshipping community. And they were also committed to the sacraments, to eating and sharing meals together and praying together. Y'all, when I think about that, when I think about what community looks like, what koinonia looks like, is it looks like what we do <laughs> still today. I mean, we share a lot of meals together. We're starting those back up on Wednesday night. There's a lot of fellowship that goes around the table. You know, we, we're a worshiping community. We, we, uh, we have small groups and Sunday school classes that are committed to teaching and learning. You know, we take up offerings to support missions. We see the early church doing that in the book of Acts. They were supporting causes that helped uh, people who were in need. And y'all, this is why a lot of our closest friends are in our church. is because of Koinonia Fellowship. This is the environment where spiritual formation is happening. But it goes deeper. It goes deeper. Because what you see is Barnabas is sent to this community. To encourage them. You know, the word Barnabas actually means encourager. 
I mean, so his gift was his name. His name was his gift. And he was sent to Antioch to encourage these young Christians in their faith walk. And not long after being there, he sends for the Apostle Paul to come from Tarsus. And Paul comes, and Paul spends an entire year discipling this faith community. So at the heart of their koinonia was encouragement to one another. They, they, were, they were there to support each other. They were there to love on each other. They were there to help each other when there were struggles going on. You know, when I think about that, how many times has the church been there for you when you've been going through something? How often have you received encouragement from people in the church? Probably quite often. You've received cards, letters, phone calls, people letting you know they pray for you, your groups. Y'all are great about providing meals for people. All of that is wrapped up in koinonia. It's what this church community is all about. But it goes deeper. You see, there was a strong discipleship aspect to this too. And this is what the Apostle Paul is, is involved in. The Apostle Paul comes and takes a year just teaching them. You see, there was intentionality placed on their growth and spiritual formation. This is what Paul was brought in to do. And this is what the people are giving themselves over to doing. So this community was committed to growing in their faith. And y'all, that part reminds me of how important it is that when we're a part of a church fellowship, that we come to things like worship, we come to Wednesday nights, we eat and share meals together. But probably one of the most important things we do is small groups. Whether that's Sunday school class or meeting with a group of other Christians in a home or on campus or somewhere, and you do life together. You study Scripture together. You hold each other accountable. You pray for each other. You give encouragement. Y'all, that to me is the essence. That is what is the most attractive thing about church. About koinonia. Or those types of fellowships. And so, the question that that begs of me is, is are you plugged into a learning environment? Are you making that a part of your spiritual formation? Are you growing and doing life in a small group of other Christians? But there's a danger. There's a danger that we all... are susceptible to. And that danger is this. We can believe that if we just do a lot of church stuff, that somehow or another, that's going to form us into the image of Christ. More committed Christians. But if we aren't careful, and the church is really good at this, we can program you to death. <laughs> We can offer so many programs and, and we promote them all and we think you should come to all of them and be a part of all of them. And if you're not involved, then you should be serving in them <laughs> and making them happen. I mean, we're really good at that sort of stuff. And if we're not careful, the message that we're sending is that if you are committed to Jesus, then you're going to participate in all this stuff. But that doesn't correlate to being formed in the image of Christ. Church stuff. Instead, what we need, or should be promoting and encouraging people to do, is to encourage you into a deeper life. So that Christ can be formed in you. 
And y'all, this was Paul's concern. We see it throughout his ministry. And you know, that's really what he's getting at in relations in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. You see, Paul has laid out earlier in that letter how this group of Christians is doing a lot of religious activities. But it isn't changing who they are. They are failing to have Christ formed on the inside of them. And so here's the critical question. Is what we are, 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 who am I becoming by what I'm doing? That's the question. This is the question of formation. You see, it goes deeper than am I just reading the Bible and talking about it with other church people? Or how many worship services am I coming to a month? Or how many places am I volunteering in a church? You see, we can have unformative learning. We can learn a whole bunch of stuff. We can be doing a whole bunch of things, but it not change who we are. And if that's what's happening, then we're missing. <laughs> we're missing the point. And there's no place that can keep you busier than a church. But busyness doesn't equate to life change. Who am I becoming by what I am doing? That talks about the value of it that it has in our life. And is it making a difference? So what do we want to happen here? I think this is very important. What we want is to participate in a church in such a way that our focus is on being changed by what we participate in. And so all of this is about the attitude that we have when we do it. Do I show up and worship? And do we say, well, I don't really know that song. <laughs> I don't think I'll sing that today. Or it's too hot in here. Whew, gosh. Or it's too cold in here. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. Today! <laughs> or do, do we show up and, 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 and you know, some of y'all probably think, why are these lights in here? They're messing up the screens this morning. Those of you in the back. We'll come back tonight and you'll find out why. But what's our attitude when we come in? Are we distracted by our creature comforts and our feelings and all of that? Or do we walk through those doors and these doors up here saying to ourselves, God, I want to meet with you today. I want to have an experience of your presence today. Now, that kind of attitude makes all the difference in the world. Do we say, God, I want to be a part of a group of people that is all about You and how our lives can take on more of the flavor of Your life. Help me to do that, Lord. Through participating in this group or Bible study or through serving, let me love people like You love them, Lord. Help me to help someone else experience the gospel today. You see, when our hearts are genuinely moved by what changed, by what moved Jesus' heart, then we will pour ourselves out in love. Because we're learning to love what He loves. You see, this kind of spiritual dynamic happens in places where koinonia produces a community of people that are being conformed to the image of Christ. We see this happening in Antioch all down through the ages. And it can even happen in our church and life today. It's about internal transformation. It's about who we are becoming and not what we are doing. 
remember what we sang about just a moment ago. They will know we are Christians by what? By our church activity? By our coffee and donuts? By how busy I am in the church? No. You said it earlier. By our love. Who are you becoming by what you are doing? My prayer is it would be all leading us to become more like Jesus. And as your pastor, I'm committed to that. Let's pray. God, we want to see you move in our lives in new ways. We want you to renew our hearts, God, because we confess that we tend to get focused on the wrong kinds of stuff. And we love to stay busy. We love the doing part. But we know that the formational part is not easy. We don't like change very much, Lord. But God, we know that, that this is the life You call us to. For those who lose their life will gain life. For those who take up their cross and follow You are truly living what it means to be a Christ follower. We want to follow You, Jesus. We want to become more like You. But we know it's not easy. Because we have to come to grips with those places in our life, those rough places that are not like You. But keep calling us to something greater, something better. God, I pray that, that You would strengthen our church community so that no matter what kinds of programs and activities that we offer, Lord, that, that we might help each other to grow. To become more like You. We thank You that we don't have to make this journey alone. But You have surrounded us with brothers and sisters to journey with us. And Lord, I know for some here today, they're not really plugged in on that level with our church. And God, I know as a church, we got to do better at offering more groups and opportunities for people to be a part of. So help us, God, to grow in these ways. Whether it's committing to a group of Christians that study and learn and do life together. Or as a church staff, and leadership teams, Lord, that are tasked with taking seriously discipleship ministry. So help us to be a community of people that are being formed, that are being shaped and molded, that are being transformed by Your grace and power. so that we might experience the greater things that you have for us. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray in your name.